Damn it, I did it again. There we go. Uh, cool. Right. Um, should be a quick one. Wait, where's my hat? The Code Pirate strikes again. Maybe I should rebrand the channel as The Code Pirate or something, right? Um, wicked. Um, so this, this is probably not going to take very long. We, we're just going to finish off our, our hangman. Um, last uh, in the last stream, we got to the point where um, we were going to create a function um, that was going to check the win loss um, situation, right? So, in order to do that, we are going to use the all um, keyword. Now, the way that all works is it takes an iterable. Uh, let's bring up my Python console. Um, if I've got an iterable which is filled with, uh, so an iterable basically means a list or something vaguely similar to a list, something you can iterate through. Anything, if you can use it for a um, uh, a for loop, it's iterable. Okay, so let's say uh, I'll, I'll increase the size of this here. Um, let's create a list of true and false values, right? Um, let's call it values. There we go. We're going to have uh, true, we're going to have false, we're going to have false, and we're going to have another true. Okay. Um, no, you all understand what's going on there, right? We've got this list of values. They're either true or false. I'm going to try and get my thing so it actually looks the same there. Um, now, there's a couple of uh, keywords in Python uh, that you can use, um, which make it easy to uh, to find out um, ab about the state of certain lists, okay? Um, so if I use the keyword all, and hopefully this won't crash my computer this time, if I do all values, right, all will return true if and only if every single item within your list is true. So this should return false. There we go, right? There's another one called any. If I use any um, and plug values in there, any will return true if uh, any of the, uh, the the values are in, inside the iterable are true. So um, if I run that, I should get true. There we go. Okay. Now, if I change values so it's all true, um, let's just put three trues in there. If I change that so it's three trues, um, now when I do um, all, I should get true. There we go. And obviously, any should also be true. Um, does that does that make sense, right? We've we've got this uh, this keyword. Basically, it looks at the whole contents of the list. If every single one of them equates to true, it returns true. If any of those are false, it's going to return false, right? So what we're going to do? I've, got, I've I've lost my I've lost my placemat from a cup. It's going to leave rings on my desk. It doesn't matter. Um, what we're going to do is we are going to build this list um, based on all of the letters in the word uh, and the letters that we have guessed, right? Because if um, all, if every single letter in the word also appears in our, um, wait, do we? Okay, so we also need uh, guest letters here. Uh, I put death track in there. We do need that, but we also need guest letters. Right, so if every single letter in our word also appears in our list of guest letters, then that means we've guessed all of the letters that appear in our word, which means we've won, right? Um, if that's not the case, then we check to see how far along the death track we are. If uh, we are up to, um, how many items are there in our death track? 
0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. If we've reached um, 7 on the death track, well, that's game over, right? Um, so we've lost. Now, in order to do this first one, to check every single letter in the word actually appears in guest letters, well, we could write a for loop or we could use um, one of those funky list comprehensions that I showed you in the last video. So here's something that we could do for instance. Um, we say letter in guest letters uh, for letter in word. All right, so let's break that down um, and work out exactly what's going on, right? Um, we're going through every single letter in the word, right? Any string is an iterable. You can iterate through the different letters in the string. So we're saying for every letter in the word, assign it to this temporary variable letter, right? And then tell us whether that letter is in the list of guest letters. So if, if, if the word is lemon, for instance, the first letter is L. So what we're essentially saying is, is L in our list of guest letters? If it is, obviously that's gonna return true, and so we add that to our list. If it's not, it's gonna return false. So by the end of this, by the end of going through every single letter in the word, we are going to end up with a, um, a list of true and false values. The list of true and false values will be the same length as the word, right? And it's essentially going to say true, true, false, false, true, false, true, false, depending on what letters uh, we've, we've, we've guessed. Okay. Now, if, ev if the whole thing is true, 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 all along, it means that every single letter in our word has been guessed, which means we're a winner. Yay. Okay. So at that point, we are going to um, return... Um, let's say a win is going to be two. Um, otherwise, we're going to check to see if we um, have run out of lives, right? If the death track is equal to seven, we've, we've lost, right? So we're going to say if uh, L, not else, L if uh, death track equals seven, um, we are then going to return one because that is a, um, a loss condition. Um, otherwise, we are going to uh, return zero. Okay, if we return zero, then um, we, in fact, instead of returning zero, we're going to return false. Hmm. We're going to return false. Uh, because if we return false, it means we haven't won and we haven't lost. We carry on with the game, okay? If we return two or one, it means we've either won or lost, but we'll sort out whether it's a win or a loss afterwards, right? Um, there is there is a reason for me doing this, doing it this way, okay? You could, and there's nothing stopping you, having a command here which prints out, oh, well done, you're a winner. Um, and then returns true, telling us to exit the game, or prints out, oh, you're, you're, you've lost, and then, uh, and then returns false um, there, uh, or, or returns true to exit the game. Um, that, there's, there's reasons for doing it both ways. I'm doing it this way specifically so I can teach you about a certain um, thing, right, which is known as syntactic sugar. Return true, return one, um, that means something in my head at the moment. I think, oh, cool, two means that we've won, right? And one means that we've lost. But that might make sense if I've written it down somewhere. It doesn't make it particularly easy to read. And so what I can do is I can create constant variables, constant variables, there's an oxymoron, constants, if you like, or variables that hold a constant value. Uh, because you can't specifically declare constants in Python. Um, and I could give them the name win or lose, right? So I could say uh, win equals uh, two. And then I can say loss 
equals one. And then any time I want to refer to a win or a loss, I can do this, okay? It makes it easier to read. And, and ideally, these should be defined right at the very start of the, uh, of the program, okay? This is a process referred to as syntactic sugar. Some people don't like it. I think it's kind of useful because it means if you're if you're keeping track of lots of specific codified values, you can create these constants uh, to refer to those values. In fact, in Pygame, um, when you do that uh, line in Pygame, which is um, from Pygame dot locals uh, import star except spelt correctly uh, what that what that does is it imports a whole bunch of these uh, preset values um, in fact if I just show you on the Python console rather than muddy my, my thing here let's let's do this now um, from pygame uh, dot locals import star import star nope what have I done there from pygame in import import star there we go um, it's imported all of these different um, syntactic sugar variables look you can see uh, blend underscore max is the same as the number five right um, drop text is minus one apparently you know um, quit is 12 you know if you don't import those uh, variables you'll have to remember that the pygame code for quit is 12 and that's just a pain okay obviously we're not using pygame right now i just thought that was a, a cool example uh, to use so um we're going to return a win obviously i mean there's nothing stopping you from returning um like a string like win in quote marks um but this does um reduce the amount of uh, memory required by using uh, integers rather than uh, strings uh, and also it, it can allow you to do some funky manipulation with it okay so uh, this is our check win loss function now i am going to move the syntactic sugar um constants to the top of my program now up here um i'll just put a little comment um uh, set them up there Boom. Do, 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 do. right um, so now what have we got we've got check win loss we are going to um, do, 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 do that replaces nope we need to do that next right so We are going to um, store the value of uh, check win loss, whatever it returns. If it's a win or a loss or just false, we are going um, to do something here. There's, a, there's some Python terminology I kind of want to teach you, but it's only recently been introduced in version 3.8. And so I don't think it will work at school because they're still running 3.7. So maybe I'll hold off on that and we'll do it. The, we'll do it the old fashioned way. Right. Uh, we are going to um, do the following. We're going to set result to false. Result is going to be whatever the result is of the um, win-loss situation. So we're now going to say result equals check win-loss. And we have to pass um, word. Um, we have to pass um, guest letters. And we have to pass um, death track. Is it death track? Is that what we called it? Yes. Okay. Um, and then we are going to say if 
Um, if result, so if our result is either a win or a loss, well, we want to end the game, yeah. Um, otherwise, we're just gonna we're just gonna carry on. So we're gonna say if result um, game running equals false, okay. And because we set up our loop so that it's only running while uh, game running equals true, now that we've set that to false, we're gonna sort of exit out. Now the reason the reason I chose to uh, have these uh, values uh, returned here is because after we're out of the game loop, we can then uh, print out results and things like that. I'm certainly not muted, at least not on not on mine. I'm I'm certainly I'm coming through here. Um, I don't know. Just double check your volume, your headphones. I'm getting uh, my my. My bars are definitely going up when I when I talk here. So just just double check that. Um, so yeah. So after we're out of the game loop, then we can do the post game stuff where we look at the result uh, and we can then keep track of a score as well. And we can ask the player if they want to go again, basically. Um, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're now out of the game loop, right? And so we can um, uh, do post game messages. Okay. Uh, we can do something like um, if result equals win. Okay. There's our syntactic sugar coming back in there. Uh, we can say uh, print uh, yay. You correctly guessed that the word was um, word. And it only took you um yeah So I'm going to check something out here. Um, paste that in there. Paste that in there. No, definitely not muted. It's coming through. It's coming through on mine. No, definitely not. So it's it is on your end. Um, There we go. Right, cool. Um, so, and it only took you this number of guesses, and that is going to be uh, the length of uh, guest letters. Cool. Um, otherwise, we're going to print... Um, You lost. The word was uh, that. Um, but it's too late now. Um, word. Okay. Um, the other thing as well that I might do at this stage is um, add a score track. Um, so maybe here we'll keep track of the score. Um, yeah. 
I'm going to do that here. So we're going to say score equals zero there. Um, and we will um, score plus equals uh, one. And then down here, we can say something like um, print. Uh, so far, you have won um, games. Score like that. Okay. Um, so there we go. The final thing that we can do now is ask the player if they want to play again. And if they want to play again, well, basically, all of this lot ends up going into a um, uh, into a big loop, right? Um, so maybe maybe let's do that. Um, Let's do something like uh, something like that. Uh, and we're going to say, um, in fact, do we even need to? I'm going to say, if input blah, 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 um, we are going to um, set program running to false. OK, and I'm going to just edit this so that all of this lot is in one massive loop uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, except for score because that needs to be uh, the same so I'm gonna need a while loop here uh, and we're, we should say program running equals true and then we can say while program running we can do literally all of this stuff. Um, cha ching, um, and then if they if they hit enter, uh, it's just going to exit the game. If they type anything else in, uh, program running is still true. So it's just going to go all the way back up to the top. It's going to not reset the score, and it's just going to start again with a brand new game. Okay, so. Let's run it and, and, and see, yeah? Oh, three letter word. This might be difficult. Oh, cool. Um, I reckon it's the. Oh, it's not, it's not the. Um, it might be toe. Yay! Uh, okay, you correctly guessed that the word was toe and it only took you four guesses. Boom, so far you have won one games. Uh, hit enter to play a game or any text and enter to quit. So let's hit enter to play a game. Cool, we've got a whole new uh, word. Let's try E again. Uh, e is in there. Uh, let's try T. T is not in there. Okay. Um... Let's try M. If your um, win-loss post-game code is unreachable, um, do you have... So your game running loop, is yours still set to while true? Because if it's set to while true, it will never exit that loop. Um, so just double check that you have this flag game running and that is set to... Uh, and that is set to true. Uh, there's a... There's, I'd like to point out, right, um, there's a number of ways that we could improve the efficiency of this, not least of which probably farming out this whole lot here um, to, um, to a function. So our game loop should really be display gallows, display words, display letters, um, do user input, um, check, check results, right? That's, that's, what it's, that's what it should be. Okay, um, and then maybe we should have a function called post game as well. 
separating your code into functions is is a really really useful way of ha you know being able to track down bugs and stuff like that i reckon uh, the word is mode so i'm going to guess e and d no uh, maybe it's more no M mole no um I, I'm nearly dead. Uh, mm, more mole mode. Mm, mope. It's not. It's not mope, is it? Um, I don't I have no idea what this word is but I've only got one more guess and I'm sure it's going to tell me then um, I'm going to you lost the oh the word was move the word was move now I've just spotted a bug here um, in that it we don't get to actually see our hanged man there um, so maybe, maybe if we lose, uh, we should then print out the the hanged man, or maybe we should increase the number there. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, so far, I've won one games. So that's that's still true. I'm going to play again, um, and then hopefully, is that did that register? And then hopefully uh, we'll get this one and I can show you the score thing actually working. Um, nope. Uh, move the result. Yeah, you could, you could, you could move that after display gallows. But, but well, the, see the thing is, display gallows happens. Um, Display gallows happens first thing, and we really do want to see the the progress along the track before, because we want to see what the hangman looks like. I think uh, the best way of doing it, because we don't we don't really want to display the dead hangman until we've actually lost. So we could put that in here. Uh, if we've if we lost, right, uh, then we can do um, uh, was it display gallows um, seven? Is it seven? Is that the the death one? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's eight. Display gallows eight. Um, and there, that, that, that should work. In fact, if I restart the program now. Oh God, not another three letter word. <sighs> what three letter words are there? Four, no. Um, ant. Okay. Ah. Uh, Man, maybe no. Um, uh, tan cat cat yes. Okay, um, let's play again. Uh, I I don't know about you guys. I think the longer words are actually easier. Um, gonna need some more vowels in there. Armament. No, it can't be armament because we've already got. Ah, uh, argument. Yes. Boom. Look at that. Two games. So we've we've successfully checked that the score is also um being kept track of as well let's start again let's do another one um i you know what i'm gonna deliberately w lose this on purpose uh, so that we can see uh that hangman being displayed when we actually lose uh, i've got to make sure i do actually lose now um oh god uh, z I ain't gonna have z in there oh god what's happened okay it's not eight. <laughs> it must be seven. It, it must be seven. Let's test it again. See, this is the importance of testing your, your program. So I'm just going to go through random letters that are unlikely to be in the word. Uh, the bottom row of the, uh, the keyboard 
is usually a good one. Q probably isn't in there. Yeah, cool. And now it displays our hung man. It tells us that we lost. The word was smooth, uh, but it's too late now. Maybe we might want to put some quote marks around that so that it actually, you know, so that we can tell this is this is the word that's being displayed there. You know, but I mean, there's there's a lot of ways that we could um, make improvements to this program, but it, I mean, it does everything that it's set out to do, right? It's um, uh, it randomly chooses a word from a file. Um, it goes through the process of playing a game of Hangman. Um, it, in fact, does more than we originally set out to do uh, because it keeps track of the score of the number of games that we've had, um, and uh, when we um, when we finish the game, either win or lose, it asks us if we want to play again, um, and so we can we can keep on going and see how many games we can win before either we get bored. I don't know. Maybe you you want to introduce a number of lives that you have. So you know you have the um, if you lose three games, then that's the end of your score or something like that. You know, and and the score resets. That's that's something that you could have a think about um, implementing. But, um, but I mean, we've got a fairly a fairly robust program. Um, it's nicely commented, except for uh, the display letters function. So I'm going to add a doc string to that, and display letters. Um, it displays the letters uh, that have been guessed, uh, but are not in the word okay uh, so word is a string um, the word um, that must be guessed uh, guest letters is a list um, And I don't think it returns anything. No, return them. There we go. Um, wicked. Uh, I should probably put some doc strings in here as well. Document in your code is a very good habit to get into so that anyone reading your code, like a teacher, for instance, or anyone else working on your programming team uh, can actually see what each part of the code is actually supposed to do. But also so that you, when you come back to your code after a few days away from it, um, you can get back into it and think, oh yeah, I remember what that was doing. Um, so uh, checks to see if uh, the game has been uh, won. Uh, lost or neither and returns an appropriate value uh, that's the word that should be guessed guest letters is a list um, all of the letters which have been guessed so far. And death track is uh, the number of um, letters guessed which are not in the word. Cool. And return is going to return um, to if um, all word, all letters in Word uh, have been guessed. Uh, one, if um, uh, too many bad guesses made. on a new line um, uh, or none if uh, neither neither a win or a loss has occurred that is probably um, too wordy really but you know 
whatever. Let's let's put that in there. Okay. I'm going to add a few more comments as well here. Um, uh, set initial score for the session. And we are going to mark the uh, program. I'm going to, you know what, I'm going to change that. I'm going to say loop until uh, program, until user quits, let's say. Loop until program, lose user quits. Um, so um, we're going to say reset uh, guest letters. Um, Choose word from file. Um, set um, bad guess. I mean, I called it death track. Bad guesses would be a better variable name, really, uh, to zero. OK. Um, I am going to swap the positions of result and game running. Um, Just so I can say loop until the game has been won or lost. Um, this is all straightforward, so I don't need to go into that. I should probably have a comment here that says um, input user guess and validate. Um, and then um, check for win. Or loss. I mean, yeah, check for win or loss uh, and exit game as necessary. It's not your spell necessary. Okay, and then here's the post game stuff. Uh, that's all pretty straightforward. Um, I'm going to put a comment here saying uh, if we lose, uh, the player uh, doesn't see the completed hangman unless um, we display it here. That clears up any confusion as to why that uh, particular line is there. Um, and then uh, we can say something like um, ask the user if they want to play again, uh, quit if they don't. I just realized I haven't actually checked to see if my program quits, um, so I should probably do that. Let's give it a, give it a quick go. Um, maybe I'll, maybe, oh, look at that, even, yes. Okay, um, I don't want to play again, so I quit. There we go, and it exits. Maybe, um, maybe just we should have some little sign off saying um, goodbye. Thanks for playing. Um, uh, create an account to download DLC. Cool. Uh, so there we, there we go. We're, we're, we're pretty much done. Um, an exercise for you guys. Um, I mean, obviously, I'm going to share up this code with you. Um, I, In fact, I'll do that right now. I'll copy and paste it into Pastebin, and I'll paste a link in the, um, in the chat down there. Uh, so let's go to Pastebin. Paste bean, do, 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 and we want Python syntax highlighting, ching, create a new paste. Oh, my paste has triggered our automatic spam detection filter. I've got to enter a capture. A C M S Y G. Submit. Hey, there we go. Right. Uh, copy that. And let's just go back to the chat. There is the full 
um, code for the game. So uh, you can use my code to help uh, fix your own games or you can uh, use my code and go through it until you understand it. Uh, one thing that I would suggest you do because my code isn't perfect by any stretch of the imagination, especially this bit here, the inputting user guesses and validating. Um, maybe see if you can farm that out to a function so that we tidy up our game loop a little bit. All right. Um, that's really it. I can't really think of anything else. In terms of... Uh, text-based Python. And you know what? I've, I've got a lot of um, Pepe errors, so I'm just going to Control Alt L. Um, oh, most of them are shadows name from outer scope. I should probably change those, but whatever. I ain't gonna. I ain't gonna worry about that for now. Um, invalid escape sequence. Uh, it's probably because of that. It's because of the backslash. Don't worry about that, right? Pep 8, it's their warnings, they're not errors. Um, so yeah, so um, see if you can um, tidy this up by uh, farming that out to a function maybe. Um, you could you could even do the post-game stuff as a function as well uh, for practice. Um, but we've got a working game it's kind of cool you can you can play that you can add your own words to the um to the dictionary as well if you need to um if anyone is interested in taking this one step further uh and doing a because this is all text-based right um and who plays text-based games anymore i mean i do um and uh, Iron Realms Entertainment are looking for uh, text adventure coders at the moment. If you're, if you do as well, um, you know. No, I don't. I'm not. A, I'm not an affiliate of Iron Realms Entertainment, by the way. I just. I had an email from them saying, "Yo, do you want to come and work for us?" And I was like, "Kind of teaching at the moment," um, but they are looking for uh, for programmers. Um, anyway. If you are wanting to take it one step further and uh, go from purely text-based output to a more graphical environment, uh, maybe I can do some extra videos during the holidays uh, for that. Uh, please register your interest either in the chat, in YouTube, in the comments, or um, in the Discord, whatever. Uh, if there's enough demand for it, I will do the video. Uh, but if no one wants that, then I ain't going to bother because, you know, I know how to do it. And if no one else wants to know how to do it, then, you know, I, I'm not going to waste my time. All right. Has anyone got any questions before I sign off? This, this was slightly longer than I anticipated, but I think it was worth it. The other thing as well that I wanted to do, which I probably don't have time for now, is uh, keeping a top ten scores file. Um, so maybe we'll look at maybe we'll look at that as well. Um, I mean, that's something that you could think about. You've got this score. When they quit the program, how about writing that score out to a file? How about writing the the ten highest scores? And every t if you've got or if you've already got ten scores in your file, how are you going to uh, sort out which ones are the um, which ones are higher than other ones, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. Um, I mean, to me, it's super easy. To you guys, it might not be. So that's that's an extra extension that you can add to your um, to your programs, keeping a record of the the top ten highest scores. You might even add a feature where. Uh, when you first um, start playing, you, you enter your name so that when you store the scores, you can store the score next to the player's name. You know, there's, there's a lot of expansion that you can do to this simple program without having to worry about things like graphics and stuff like that. There's a lot of ways that you can improve the text-based program uh, before going on to the graphical thing. And the thing to remember as well, graphics are window dressing. Uh, the the actual stuff that makes the game work is going to be exactly the same in a text-based game compared to a 
uh, a graphical based game. But what's going to differ is going to be our uh, functions like display gallows, right? Display gallows prints out some artwork. But if we were doing a graphical version of this, display gallows would draw that artwork on the screen. Yeah. Um, but uh, and display letters as well. We'd have to render them on the screen rather than printing them out. Um, but something like guess letter, where it's checking to see what's actually been typed in, all of that validation, it's going to be exactly the same if you're doing it graphically or doing it um, uh, text-based, right? Um, choosing the word, that's going to be exactly the same as well. Um, displaying the word... Um, is obviously we're going to have to render the uh, the word rather than um, uh, rather than anything uh, you know just printing it out. But checking whether you've won or lost that's going to be exactly the same. You know, so there's going to be big sections of the game that we can reuse in any graphical version of it. So getting the best text-based hangman game you can is going to um, put you in a, in a good position to then move on to create in a graphical hangman game. All right. Um, I can see there's only three people left. Well done. Well done to those of you that managed to survive all the way through. Um, if you're watching this on the rerun, uh, then thank you very much for tuning in um, and taking uh, time out of your own day. I know, I know you guys are busy. By the way, though... Um, I had, I had originally scheduled this stream to happen on a Friday, um, but I'm not going to be around um, t Friday, that's tomorrow, uh, to do it. So um, that time that you would normally sit and watch my stream live, uh, you can sit and watch this, this video. Uh, and it's eight minutes shorter than, than normal. So how, how about that? Um, why, don't we, why don't we finish on... Um, something cool I I can't really think of anything cool um, so how about we have um, <laughs> I know I've been I've done this to death um, mystic cave zone <laughs> who needs TikTok right uh, anyway that's the end of that I'm gonna go now uh, thank you very much for your time, everybody. I'll leave the music playing over the outro as well.